name's Gordon Brown and I'm a lecturer at Solent University and I'm also a trustee of the Good Earth Trust and I have built with earth blocks, uh, mainly in East Africa. And these earth blocks are um, made of earth. This particular one is an interlocking block which uh, I have in front of me, which you're welcome to come and have a look at at the end. Uh, the problem in, in construction is that a lot of, particularly reconstruction, is in concrete block and fired bricks. Concrete blocks use an awful lot of cement, and there is a lot of embodied energy in the uh, concrete, and also with fired bricks, uh, there is a lot of um, embodied energy with kilning them and uh, producing those bricks. So, um, particularly with these blocks, um, there is a mortar joint, uh, there is no need for a mortar joint uh, because they interlock with each other. Uh, the deforestation is a real problem to build sustainably and the use of concrete blocks and fired uh, bricks uh, really does uh, lead to quite a lot of deforestation. In a particular example here of uh, brick kilns in, um, excuse me, it's, uh, there, um, there we go. Um, these brick kilns, um, there is uh, a lot of deforestation. Hopefully the video clip will show in a moment. Uh, look at the kiln but also look at the deforestation that is going on in the, uh, the background. And these kilns are burning for three days. Look at the size of the timber that they're using and the deforestation in the background. The bricks that they produce in the middle of the kiln are very good strong bricks. But a lot of the bricks um, particularly the outer parts of the bricks um, of the kiln are not, are not of a particularly strong, durable quality. So there is some issues with these and if I move on, the Good Earth Trust um, with promoting earth block technology particularly is interested in an interlocking block which cuts down on the embodied energy and uses local material to the site, local uh, labour and the uh, machine that we uh, have developed uh, is very much one which can be used by the local people, it can form a, a small micro business and uh, help the local economy. Um, Typically, the blocks are made with uh, tropical lateritic soil uh, with some sand and a small amount of um, uh, cement, 5% cement, which will act as a stabiliser to make the blocks more durable. As I said earlier, they are interlocking, so there is uh, only a small need to bond the blocks together with a very thin joint. The fired bricks tend to warp and bend in the kilns and they therefore need very thick mortar joints and once again that mortar joint is using rather a lot of cement. The block machine that you can see uh, is a manually operated block. There are mechanical blocks around, uh, machines. Um, there is a tendency that they need, first of all, they need fuel, and there's a tendency for more to go wrong with them. So this particular block machine is very robust and has a minimum of moving parts. And the soil is put into the, um, into the box, the box is closed, and then the hand-operated ram will uh, give it a, a good compaction and then the block is uh, lifted and removed from the machine. Um, I see these not in replacing bricks, not in replacing concrete blocks, but I see it as a part of a toolkit, that there are 
times there are instances where these these blocks can be uh, built, uh, used to improve um, uh, local housing and conditions. Uh, typically, uh, at the bottom two pictures there, there is a school uh, there which was built 15 years ago um, in Malawi, and the picture is of a, of a house which was built in Tanzania uh, about 25 years ago. The issue of durability is um, always put up as an argument and I say that if the uh, building is uh, built correctly and I use the expression hat and boots, if there's a good overhang and a good foundation uh, these blocks can be uh, quite durable. In exposed areas they can be rendered and uh, because it is using local material, there is less CO2 and transport involved. Um, they can also be used, and the particular one I have with me today is a curved block, which is used for rainwater harvesting tanks. So in drought-stricken areas, um, this, this is a good way of um, uh, locally producing rainwater harvesting tanks, rather than transporting large plastic um, uh, tanks. The um, argument for this tool to be used as part of reconstruction, um, in, in Haiti we see the picture of shanties in Haiti and we see post um, the earthquake, post -earthquake the, the use of um, the uh, plastic sheet. So somewhere in there, within this transitional settlement, there may be a case for using earth blocks. Um, do have a look at the uh, Good Earth Trust website for more details, and do um, email me if you want uh, further details. Um, I know that time is tight, and I guess that uh, I will be taking questions uh, um, from the forum offline. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. You have seven minutes. Sorry? You have seven minutes if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm back again. Apparently you've got one or two questions. Yes, my guess is this is actually one of my concerns is uh, one of my concerns, one of my concerns um, is uh, the choice of the soil. Um, uh, local people would probably need some advice or guidance on which soil to use, otherwise the bricks wouldn't uh, press properly, etc. Yeah, and certainly every site, the soil needs to be tested from one side of a hill to another side of a hill, from one valley, top of the valley to the bottom of the valley. So each time there are simple tests for that soil, typically uh, a jam jar with water in it and settlement will give an indication, rough indication of clay content and soil type. Sorry, can I just add, um, and that guidance is provided as part of the, your work, part of your kit as it were? Yes, it, it's part of the training that is provided and also there is a manual that comes with each of the, um, the block machines that explains that. Um, another concern with um, these mortarless joints is that you, you've really got to make sure that you, you start well in your foundations, otherwise any error is going to end up being amplified. Normally these errors can be taken up in the mortar bed. How do you deal with that and also how do you deal with openings because you've got little nibs coming out there and they don't naturally fit with people's normal use of doors and openings. Okay, on, on the first point with the mortar joint, I've uh, suggested that they can be dry stacked but also they can have two, three millimeter mortar joint. You're quite right in that they are fairly unforgiving. Um, in that uh, bricks, concrete blocks with a mortar joint can be levelled up by the various masons. 
but after a bit of initial training, they're actually very good at running the string line and uh, keeping these level with a minimum amount of uh, water. Um, on the second point with the interlock, um, these interlocks, because they are earth blocks, they can be pangered off, just cut, cut off. Uh, if you want it to be decorative on exposed corners, they, there can be uh, rendering can be done. I think we're about done. Oh, we've got another one. One, one little more one. Uh, in, in terms of your, you've got this water tank. And I, I couldn't see how you get 95 tonnes of water in there without it exploding outwards. Do you have any reinforcement in there? <laughs> yes, the, the, there's waterproof render on uh, cement used on the inside uh, to keep it watertight. And on the outside there is a band of mesh.